Lesson 6-2, page 250, 1-32. Number 1, birth weights. Based on data set for births in Appendix B, birth weights are normally distributed with a mean of 3,152 grams and a standard deviation of 693.4 grams. So A, What are the values of the mean and standard deviation after converting all birth weights to z-scores? Well, the mean will be 0, and the standard deviation will be 1. B. The original birth weights are in grams. What are the units of the corresponding z-scores? Z-scores have no units. So z-scores are numbers without units. Two. Uh, okay, that's pretty much the same as one. A. For the bell-shaped graph, what is the area under the curve? It is the area, the total area always equals 1. What is the value of the median? Uh, 3,150, 3,152 grams. Uh, C, what is the mode? 3,152 grams. And D, what is the value of the variance? Well, that's going to be sigma squared, which is uh, uh, three th mm -mm, 693, 693 squared. And let's try that. 693.4 squared. 48, Excellent. Three, normal distribution. What is the difference between a standard normal distribution and a non-standard normal distribution? Well, the standard normal distribution always sets the mean to zero and the standard deviation to one by using z-scores. Uh, the non-standard uh, may or may not have those values. Okay, may or may not have those values. Number four, random digits. Computers are commonly used to generate random digits of telephone numbers to be called when conducting a survey. Can the methods of this section be used to find the probability that when one digit is randomly generated, it is less than three? Why or why not? Okay, so... Can they? No. These are for the for a Bell distribution. These are not for uh, a uniform distribution. Uh, what is the probability of getting a digit less than three? Uh, well, let's see here. If we do a uniform distribution, and you got. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, <clears throat> 9. And then you got, and let's see, that would have, and I'm just drawing a quick graph, quick thing here. It's not real, real pretty. Uh, so this area here, and that's, that's going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So it would be 0 0.3 uh, equals the probability of uh, R is less than 3. Okay? Because th think about it. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 10 areas. And 3 out of 10, 3 over 10, point 0.3. Excellent. Number 5. 
It says uh, in exercises five to eight, find the area of the shaded region. The graphs depict IQ scores of adults and those scores are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. All right, so let me draw this real quick. And I really want it black. Wow, not bad. So we're looking for this area here. So our X equals 118. We want to find this area here. So let's go to our TIN or our INSPIRE menu, six, five, two. Remember it started from the left and that was negative infinity to 118. Now, what's going to be different here is we're going to change our mean here from 0 to 100 and our standard deviation from 1 to 15. And that we get 0 0.88, 0 0.8849. Okay, can we do that in the 84? We can. Uh, second, distribution, 2 for normal CDF. Our lower bound is negative infinity. Uh, upper bound is 118. Again, we're going to change our mean to 100. Our standard deviation to 15. And there it is. 0. 0.8849. Same answer either way. Good deal. <clears throat> Number six, uh, number six. So we're somewhere over here at 91, and we're wanting to find that area. So X equals 91, and we're for the larger area. So we're going to go in here. Menu, six, five, two. Our lower bound is 91. Our upper bound is positive infinity. Our mean is 100. Our standard deviation is 15. And we get 0 0.7257. 0 0.7257. Let's try that in this one, in the 84. Second, distribution, two for normal. Our lower bound is 91. Our upper bound is positive infinity, so we got one. And second, comma for the double E, nine, nine, and 115, enter. And we got 0.7257. Hmm, same way, same exact number. Ain't that great? All right, number seven. We're looking to go from 79 to 133. Okay, so let's try that. Menu, 6, 5, 2, 79, to 133. And we got to change, all, ooh, I got too many threes there. And fifteen point nine zero oh five three. So this area here is zero point nine zero five three. 
and we can try it in the Inspire. Second, distribution to 79, 133, 115, 0.9053. Number eight. We'll let y'all do number eight. That looks like fun. Y'all do number eight. Number nine. Now look, it's 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 flipped around. What are we doing now? Now they're giving us the area, and we're going to find the x value. So let me draw that real quick. And 99.18. 0 0.9918. So let's go to our calculator. We got menu, 6, 5, and then this time we're going to go to 3, inverse. We got 0 0.9918. Our mean is 100, our standard deviation is 15, and we got 135.9, 136. So x equals 136. We can do that in 84 as well. Uh, second, Distribution three, area is zero point nine nine one eight. Our mean is one hundred. Our standard deviation is fifteen. And the tail is from the left. So we're gonna check, put it on the left, enter, and we got one thirty six again. Number 10, number 10. Ah. Uh, and we're looking for over here zero point. One five eight seven. Now remember, the entire area is one. So if we're looking for this area over here, if we're looking for that area over there. We're going to go menu six five three, and on the inspire, we're going to say one minus zero point one five eight seven, and then change that to one hundred. And that 215. And that gives us 115. So X equals 115. Now on the 84, we just need to do a little. Uh, I'll show you. Second distribution. And then 3. And then we're looking for 0 0.1587. One hundred and fifteen is, but we need to change this to the right. Okay, change that to the right. Make sure right is highlighted. Press enter, and then again one fifteen. Okay, I'm going to shut down the eighty four because it really slags me down. Uh, uh, number eleven and number twelve. Uh, y'all can do and put on the form. 13. 13. A little bit different. Find the probability that a male has a back to knee length less than 21. So the probability that a male is less than, back to knee length is less than 21. So 
But let's, let's draw this. Maybe if I do them shorter, I'll let them do it better. Nah, not really. Okay, so here we've got, we've got, it's 23.5, 23.5. 21 is going to be over here somewhere, and I'm not real sure. That's 21, right? This is x equals 23.5, x equals 21. And we can let that area, right? That's what we're looking for. So let's go here to our calculator. Menu, 6, 5, 2, negative infinity to 21. And then we've got 23.5. And we have 1.1 for our standard deviation. And we get 0 0.115. So this is 0 0.0115. And this area here is 0 0.0115. Okay? That's how it's all related. Okay, remember the... The uh, probability is some number between 0 and 1. Well, the area underneath this curve is 1. So someplace in here is less than 1. Fourteen. We got find the probability that a female has a back to knee length greater than 24. So probability female is greater than 24, all right, and just because uh, it helps me, I'm going to draw, uh, visualize what I'm actually trying to, trying to solve, and so we got 22.7 is here in the middle, 22.7, that's the mean, 24 is going to be over here to the right somewhere, 24, and there we go. All right, we're looking for greater than. Okay. Uh, menu, six, five, two, 24, positive infinity, uh, 22.7 is our mean. Our standard deviation is one. And we got 0 0.968. 0 0.09. So there is a 9.68% chance that, a, that when you run across a female that she has uh, a back to knee length of greater than 24 inches. That's good to know information, isn't it? Number 15, I try to help. Find the probability that a female has a back to knee length between 22 and 24. So that what's the probability that a, ooh, we'll say 22 is less than the female, is less than 24. Okay, let's see here. And I'll just draw a quick, oh, that's a terrible straight line. And we got 22 over here. Oh, and it, it, well, the female is 22.7, so it's really going to be like right there. 22, and then 24, hmm, so let's go, uh, menu, 6, 5, 2, 22, 24, 22.7, and 1, point six six one two. 0 0.6612. And you can do this in the 84. It's not a big deal. Number 16 is on you. Number 17 is on you. You can put it on the form. 
And number 18, let's see, we are looking for the first quartile. Uh, Q1 equals P25. So let's, let me draw one here. Uh, I had it going pretty good. And uh, anyway. I don't like it, period. Let's draw it again. So we're looking for this area here, 0 0.25. And we want to know what the X is. OK. Uh, so let's go to our calculator. And we're going to go menu. Six five three zero point two five uh twenty two point seven our mean is one and twenty two so the x value is twenty two so twenty five percent of the women have a uh, back to knee length less than twenty two inches. Number 19, uh, ooh, now it's a party. Number 19, now it's fun. Let's, now we're getting in number 19. It says significance. Instead of using 0 0.05 for identifying significant values, use the criteria that a value X is significantly high if P of X or greater is less than 0 0.01, and a value is significantly low if P of X, it, X or less, is less than or equal to 0 0.01. So let me draw that. So uh, we're not kind of we're not confused. Well, that's not too bad. Every once in a while, every once in a while, I get a good one. So we're looking at these two areas here, and this is 0 0.01, and this is 0 0.01. All right. Uh, find the back to knee length for males. So our mean is going to be in here. Our mean is going to be 23.5. So that's x equals 23.5. Separating significant values from those that are not significant. Using this criteria, a male has is oh well. Let's first find this area here. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go to our calculator. Menu six five three zero point zero one, and we have uh, twenty three point five and one point one. And it's 20.9, so we'll just 20.941. So we got 20.9. Now we need to find the upper uh, menu, 653. And I'm going to say 1 minus. 0 0.01 because I'm working from the right. You could put 0.99, it would be the same. Uh, 23.5, 1.1, and we get 26.05. That's going to that's going to 26.1. We're going to put 26.1. 26.1. Now the question is, using these criteria, is a male back to knee length of 26 inches significantly high? It is close. It is close, but it is 26 inches is inside because this is the not significant. And uh, over here is significantly low. And over here is significantly high. And 
it is between those, so it is not significant. We'll let y'all try number 20. All right, 20 will be yours. You can put it on the thing. Uh, 21, Navy pilots. Good deal. Navy pilots. 20, 21. Uh, what does it say? The U.S. Navy requires that fighter pilots have heights between 62 and 78 inches. Find the percentage of women meeting the height required. How many, are there many women not qualified? Okay, so let's first, uh, I need to draw me something here. And what do we got here? Women are 63.7 inches, right? 63.7. Now, uh, it's supposed to be between 62, 60, 62, and I'm gonna say it's right there. I'm not real sure where it is. 62, uh, 2.9 inches. Yeah, that's about right. 62 to 78 inches. 78 inches. All right. We want to we want to find this percentage in here. Okay. Uh, the way I would write that is uh, probability that 62 is less than female pilots is less than 78 and equals. All right. Uh, we got that. So we're going to go menu, six, five, two, and we got 62, 78, and, uh, well, here's where it gets tricky. We got to put 63.7, that's the female pilot's medium height, or uh, mean height, and then 2.9 is their standard deviation. And we got 0 0.7211. So this area here is 0 0.7211. So this is going to be 0, 0 0.7211. So 72.11% of the women qualify. So are many women not qualified? I would say yes, yes. That means that 28% of women don't qualify because of height. Do not qualify because of height. Uh, uh, height. And I'm not, I'm not sure that, that the Navy's doing themselves a big service, but that's a value judgment. I should stay away from that. All right, so that's 21A. 21B, if the Navy changes a requirement, the height requirement, so that all women are eligible except for the shortest 3% and the tallest 3%. The shortest 3% and the tallest 3%. So let's, let's, let's draw a uh, thing here. We're going to say zero point zero three, zero point zero three. Okay. What are the new height requirements for women? So let's go over here. Menu six five three. Area zero point zero three. Uh, we're going to change that to 63.7, and we're going to change this to 2.9, and that's going to give us 58.2 inches. So 58.2, and let's find the upper menu, 653. I'm going to do one minus 
0 0.03. You could do 0 0.97, uh, 63.5, 63 and 2.9. At 69.2, 69.2, okay? So what are the new height requirements for women? They would be 58.2 to 69.2 inches. That would be the new height requirements. Now, let's see here. Number 22 is yours. Y'all try number 22. 23. Mickey, oh, Mickey Mouse. That's, Mickey Mouse is my favorite. 23. Disney World requires that people employed as a Mickey Mouse character must have a height between 56 and 62 inches. Find the percentage of men meeting the height requirement. Oh, Lord. You know what that means, don't you? Mm-hmm. You know what that means, don't you? So let's draw this. What do we got for men? Men, the mean is 68.6 inches. 68.6 inches. And find the percentage of, okay, 56 and 62. So we're going to go over here and that's going to, uh, 56 and 62. Uh-oh. Menu, 6, 5, 2, 56, 62. And we have 68.6. And we have 2.8. Whoa. Zero, zero, nine, two. So this area here is 0 0.0092. Okay. Uh, what does the result suggest about the genders of the people who are employed as Mickey Mouse characters? Well, since 0.92% of males meet that height requirement, it would suggest that when you go to Disney World and you meet Mickey, Mickey is not really a Mickey. Some young lady is pretending to be Mickey. All right, so that's 23A. 23A. Did not know that. 23B. If the height requirements are changed to exclude the tallest 50% 50 of men and the shortest 5% of men, what are the new height requirements? Uh, let's see here. So this right here is, uh, what well, if the, if the height requirements have changed to exclude the tallest 50%, well, that would be the mean 68.6 and, and the shortest, uh, the shortest 5% of men. So we're going to go over here, and so this area here is 0 0.45, right? Because that's 5%, and that's okay. So what is that X value there? Menu, let's go over here. Uh, menu, 6, 5, 3, and I got 0 0.05. Ooh. And then what do we got? 63, 68.6. 
and we have uh, 2.8, and that's going to be 63.99 or 64. We're going to say that's 64. So the new height requirements would be 64 inches to 68.6 inches. Hmm. 25, 24, 24. Executive jet doorway. The Gulfstream 100 is an executive jet that seats six, and it has a doorway height of 51.6 inches. What percentage of men can fit through the door without bending? Let's draw, let's draw some little thing here. And remember our mean is 68.6 and we're looking for 51, uh, 51.6, 51.6. And we're looking for this area here, okay? What percentage of men? So the probability that men is less than 51.6 is how you would write that. Let's go to our calculator, menu, 6, 5, 2, negative infinity to 51.6. And then we got 68.6, right? 68.6 and 68.6. And 2.8, 2.8. Wow. Zero point. That is, that is zero point zero zero three four five six seven eight nine. And then it was uh, six three six two seven. Six three six two seven. So I'm gonna say zero plus. Okay. Uh, it is very rare that a man can fit through that door without bending. So that's a twenty four b. Does the door design with a height of fifty one point six appear to be adequate? I'd say it's. I'd say no. Okay, no. Why didn't the engineers design a larger door? Well, the jet is relatively small and seats only six people. A much higher door would require some major changes in design and cost of the jet, and the, uh, that the great, greater doorway height is not practical. Okay? They don't sit much. 24C, 24C. What doorway height would allow 40% of the men to fit without bending? Well, let's see. Uh, menu 653, 0.4, 68.6, and then 2.8. And that's 67.9. X equals 67.9. All right. 25, eye contact. Twenty-five, eye contact. In a study of facial behavior, people in a control group are timed for eye contact in a five-minute period. Their times are normally distributed with a mean of 184 seconds. So we got a mean of 184 seconds and a standard deviation of 55 seconds. Uh, okay. For a randomly selected person from the control group, find the probability that the eye contact is greater than 230 seconds. So, uh, probability that X is greater than 230 seconds. So we're gonna go to uh, 
uh, menu 652 230 tab 9 positive infinity and then what was we got 184 and 55 184 and 55 that's 0 0.2015 equals 0 0.2015, which is, which is the mean for paranoid schizophrenics. Based on per, personal experience, does the result appear to be the proportion of people who are paranoid schizophrenics? Uh, I wouldn't think so. No. The proportion of schizophrenics is not at all likely to be as high as 20%. Uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. Uh, number 26. Number 26. Uh, y'all try number 26. Let's see what y'all can do with number 26. 27. Jet ejection seats. The U.S. Air Force once used ACES-2 ejection seats designed for men weighing between 140 and 211 pounds. Given that women's weights are normally distributed with a mean, with a mean of 171.1 pounds and a standard deviation of 46.1 pounds based on the data from the National Health Survey, what percentage of women have weights that are within those limits? Okay, so we want to find the probability uh, 140 is less than women's weight, which is less than 211. Okay, so let's go over here. Menu 6, 5, 2, and we got 140. We have 211, and let's see, women had a, uh, given that women's weights are normally distributed a mean of 171.1, and a standard deviation of 46.1, so we're thinking 55, 0. 5, 5, 6, 7. So about, about 40, let's see, about 44% of women were excluded. Okay, 28. 28 quarters after 1964 quarters were manufactured so that their weights have a mean of 5.67 grams and a standard deviation of uh, 0 0.06 grams Some vending machines are designed so that you can adjust the weights of quarters that are accepted. In, if many counterfeit coins, coins are found, you can narrow the range of, accept, of, of acceptable weights with the effect that most counterfeit coins are rejected along with some legitimate quarters. If you adjust your vending machine to accept weights between 5.6 and 5.74, what percentage of legal quarters are rejected? So probability uh, 5.6, 5.6 is less than X, is less than 5.74. We want to find that. That's A. We want to find that. So we got menu 6, 5, 2. We got 5.6, 5.74. And our mean was uh, 5.67. 
and our standard deviation is 0 0.06. 75%. Okay, 75% fall in that range. Zero point, what was it? Seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven. So 75% uh, of legal coins, 75.6 of legal coins will fall in that range. Uh, but 20. 24.33% of legal quarters, quarters would be rejected. Okay, is, is that too high or not? Uh, B, if you adjust vending machines to accept all legal quarters, except for those with weights in the top 2.5 and bottom 2.5%, what are the limits? of the weights that are accepted. So 28, 28B, uh, draw me a little thing over here. And I am looking for uh, 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 0 0.025 and over here, 0 0.025, and here in the middle, I had 5.67, 5.67. So, menu, 653, 0 0.025, and I got 5.67, and 0 0.06, I got 5.55, X equals 5.55. All right. Menu 653. 1 minus 0.025. 5.67. And 0 0.06. Oh, what did I do there? Menu 6. Five three one minus zero point zero two five five point six seven zero point zero six. Okay, that's five point seven eight seven six or five point seven nine. Five point seven nine. So I would adjust it to accept quarters between 5.55 grams to 5.79 grams. All right, good, good. I would like for y'all to do 29, 30, 31, and 32 on your own and you can submit those on the forms. If you have any, uh, uh, just email me if you have any issues or problems or something, and, and I'll be more than happy to help. Y'all have a great day.